Just think, by the time you guys get to my age, I'll long since been retired, <laughs> gaming full time. Okay. Darren, Still not knowing how to work Discord. That's what you have people for, Joseph. It just it doesn't have people to do it for him. I don't so. know. I know how to work Discord. I don't need people. <laughs> okay, is that everyone? Are you saying Joseph isn't people? We'll give it a few more minutes here. Let some people shuffle in, and then we'll get going. I'm gonna do the funny thing that people don't want to do. And ping you out. There we go. Why are you pinging me? <laughs> Almost like we want people to know things. Interesting. That's why the ping exists. Strange. That's crazy. It is crazy. How wildly uncomplicated. How uncomplicated does your life have to be that three pings a day causes you great stress? Exactly. We'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> hey there, fella. Hey there. Perfect. Slow mo in the town hall meeting channel is increased to two minutes just to you cool again. Too stacked when questions are being asked. All right, we're gonna get going. Um, not too many questions were put in from the community to ask us. So, uh, yeah, if you have anything last minute, now's your chance. Uh, we'll open up questions at the end too. Here, um, I guess we can start off with a, a big old thank you to the community. It's been what this is almost six months. Uh, actually, we're two weeks out from six months, I think, which is pretty amazing. Um, the community has grown overwhelmingly fast, uh, way faster than we ever expected. It's been amazing. Uh, the role play has been amazing, other than you know, common issues that come and go with every server. So. RDMers, um, shitlords, you know. Obviously, we're always going to promote uh, roleplay over gunplay and obviously getting rich quick. That's not what uh, Red M's about. Um, I think most people have learned that after their time here. Um, but obviously, we promote creating a story. Make sure that's your main priority here. Like I said, I've, I've met people in character, and the first thing they ask me um, when they're new is, how can I make money the fastest? And it's a it's a question that never gets old, but... Red M is a place that there's not many things to buy, you'll find, right? You can buy businesses, you can buy horses, houses, all that stuff. Guns, which most people seem to get the best guns on their third day. Um, so rebalances will come, but this is an our, our like role play place, right? It's not, you don't come here to get rich. You don't come here to buy everything in the game. Like you can, but you should make it happen over time, right? It shouldn't happen so fast. There's a lot of people that come here and just grind the living shit out of stuff, and then we have to nerf the economy, and it ruins it for everyone. Like, do something fairly. Do it to make money. You don't need to grind the living shit out of it to make 20K in three days. It's not how it should work. Um, that being said, uh, February was our criminal month. It's coming to an end. Um, most of the systems that were added will be polished, um, touched up, and made sure they're working properly. Thank you to those that report bugs all the time. Um, March will be our civilian month, right, Chad? Is Chad in here? He didn't even join, did he? He just doesn't speak yeah. um, Either way, March is going to be our civilian month where we're going to focus on new civilian jobs and general quality of life upgrades across the board. There will be a full rebalance of our food and drink system. Um, a lot more things added to do with that. There is a stress system coming. Where, like, let's say sitting by a campfire at night will reduce your stress, or smoking a cigarette, where shooting a gun will raise your stress, obviously. Um, stuff like that. Uh, oil prospecting and refining is coming. Uh, you will be able to search the land with a prospect tool and try to find oil patches. If you find an oil patch, you will be able to make a oil pump and get the black gold. Um, and then on gold, gold panning will have some adjustments coming due to how that's being treated. Um, I will openly say right now, there is a new zero tolerance for macro tools. If you are caught with the macro tool gold panning or anything, you will be instantly banned and never allowed back here again. We will not tolerate that at all. That is how the economy gets ruined. Um, a lot of people keep asking about a second server. 
we talk about it a lot quite frequently um it's heavily thought about very often we don't know how to go about it because like jed has talked with me about like we have to have like let's say you own a business in server a the main server like do you get to own that business in server b like how would that work because then if you're in server a that business is never open in server b it just becomes a fucking nightmare uh the cops we'd have to have a whole new cop system a whole new docs over there a whole new staff team like it's a huge huge thing for us to do so i know everybody wants it i know the queues suck i know people wish we could go higher on population but we can't it's a cfx thing i can't go higher than 128 Sometimes it's bad at 128 when people don't spread out, so that's Last why. night in particular. Yeah, yeah I just, uh, if I could just add to that, because this feedback comes up a couple times a day. Um, you know, we have the infrastructure and the hardware and all of that to pop this to 175, 200, 225, like tomorrow, if the culling was gone, right? So it's not a question of trying to pump the prio queue or trying to make money and all this other bullshit. Like, we play here too. We desperately want the cap to go up like desperately you know we're the ones that pushed it up as high as we did as quickly as we did Despite... open question about whitelisting too that i see being blasted like how do we go about that like do you guys think that i should just fucking whitelist everybody that's already here or force people that have been the part of the community for five months to all of a sudden have to put in a whitelist app and possibly be denied like do you see the issue with that too there's a big problem but new players like yeah i mean sure we could start whitelisting people but I don't think that's going to change your queue times or anything. So, and if we whitelisted it, we would whitelist it behind a quiz, probably not one of these interview things where you have to prove to us that you know you're some sort of amazing RPer. Because uh, I've never really seen that work properly. Uh, it seems to create sort of toxic definitions of quality RP and uh, lots of frustrations with the server. So, you know, we may make it a little harder to get on the server. You know, with a questionnaire. Or, Something like that, but I don't think we will ever get to the point where we're doing interviews and reviewing, you know, four page applications and, and all that sort of stuff, you know, for a waitlist. So, and, and the thing with the second server, guys, it's well beyond just, you know, you own a business here versus a business there. It's storylines, it's splitting the community, you know. So, let's just say, you know, Marshall Cooper is Marshall Cooper here. Uh, what if I play a Marshall Cooper over on the other server? Right? Then I have interactions over there. Those interactions carry over here. We already have enough challenges with bleed from other servers, bleed from you know different communities. I can't even imagine the bleed we'd have between server A and server B. Uh, and then I think the biggest thing is the admin team, right? We spend hundreds of hours adminning the server, right? So it's not just answering tickets. It's creating the recipes. It's placing the shops. It's recompensating people for lost items, like hundreds and hundreds of hours doing this. Um, and it would literally double all of that. And I think one of the reasons we've been effective as a server is our admins actually play on the server. So we know most of the people we're interacting with. We have a sense of where things are going wrong. We have a sense of who the shitlords are. We have a sense of who the good people are. Um, we would have to recreate that on the second server. And uh, so it's not a money issue. It's not that we can't afford to do a second server. We can. It's not that we are trying to pump up the prio. We're not. It's just a question of how do we find 10 admins that are willing to give four or 500 hours a week cumulatively, um, you know, to staffing it in a way that doesn't turn it into a shitstorm. storm. Um, Ellie, on your note there about people talking OOC and stuff, like report those people and we will deal with it. All you have to do is grab someone's ID and make a ticket and we will gladly, you know, red screen them and have a chat. Once we talk to people, they normally get the point and don't do it again. Otherwise they get removed. So all you have to do is report someone. Yeah, we can't, we, can't, as, we can't deal with things that we don't know about, right? So, Yeah, and as much as, uh, you know, people don't want to be that person who reports players, don't worry we, about being that person. Yeah, we can't know? make it, things it, better if you don't report it. And yeah. we will almost never tell the person who's been reported who reported them. I don't think we've ever actually had a single instance of that. Yes, there will be a skin wipe in the future when we upgrade framework. That will be not anytime soon, so don't worry. Months away. And it won't be an everything wipe. It'll literally just be your face and your outfits and stuff. Let's talk a little bit, Billy, if we can, about Crash Prio, how that works and some of the challenges with it, because there's a lot of misconceptions. The challenge with Crash Prio is not every crash is recognized by Crash Prio right now. Like, there's CFX as, like, some errors are coming up as a GFX issue, right, Ginge? Like, there's this whole thing where errors are being mashed together in a reporting system that... It, yeah, I'll just let, a, talk about that. yeah. On a quick note about the tech support stuff, um, 
so CFX, uh, as far as I'm aware from the few that I've managed to get a hold of and looking around online, a lot of the issues that are happening recently, so the reason why some people can no longer get past the loading screen every time without the cache issue is due to what appears to be an authorization error within the CFX framework for the launcher itself. So it's not a server-side issue, and it's not your PC's issue either. It's because of an authentication key that's still in some sort of like dev mode inside Red M itself that's messing with certain servers and causing this issue to happen. It's because they can't find the right authorization key, and it's not everyone will be affected by it. But it's something that I'm looking into, and if I find a fix or CFX find a fix, as with the tech support documents, you guys will be the first to know. Same with the GFX error. It appears to be that there's some sort of issue with the crash reporting system. So usually with logs, it would send the same file to both the server logs for CFX and that we can see, and it would also give you a crash file. But somewhere in this transfer process, it's messing up. So you're getting one error report, we're getting another error report but the error report we're both getting could very well be wrong. So I am looking into it. I've spent about four days now digging through every forum, Discord channel, and ticket I can with CFX, and it's there's not really much. It's kind of like kicking a dead horse trying to get information at the moment. People are selling information about it, but, you know, it's it's the guarantee of if we buy that information, would it be true? Or would it be false? You know, it's not a risk that I would say is willing to take. So be patient on that one. And hopefully we will have some more information on that soon. You can keep up to date with that and the community support channel. I will throw out a ping every once in a while if I find a new fix for certain issues. I do look through crash reports every day. So big thank you to everyone that posts those. I appreciate you. I believe Crash Prior was set at what level? Crash Pro said it platinum because Diamond pays big money to be Diamond, so they deserve to be at the top. So for everybody that's posting in feedback, we're aware of some of the issues when you crash and Pryo not recognizing uh, th it. Yeah, the main reason is just because some of the crashes aren't being recognized as like a crash right now. That's all. Right. It's not. It it's, happens. Yep. It's also sometimes the Connect Queue bugs out too. Like if 200 people try to join the server at a restart, shit's gonna go sideways. Like expect it. The QFIS system doesn't know what the fuck's going on. There's 200 people trying to join us, trying to sort out everybody's prior level. So, it's going to happen. Um, let me jump, jump through these questions quick, too, before we fucking dive into more shit. Uh, one of the first questions was asked was, can the constant pinging in the Discord stop? It's kind of annoying. Um, they didn't put who they were. I'm going to openly say, mute the fucking Discord. There's an option to mute it, and then it just comes up as a symbol that you've got a notification. Then you don't get the fucking ping. It's simple, man. We are here to post information to our community and get it out and let them know when we need to. That's why there's a ping system. If you don't so want to hear it, mute it. So I ping quite a bit, and the reason I ping quite a bit is I also answer a lot of tickets and a lot of feedback. And chances are, if I'm pinging, it's because we just had a whole flurry of fucking tickets or feedback or DMs or questions around a certain issue, or I've reached a frustration level where I'm fucking tired of talking about it. So uh, if I'm at yeehawing everybody, it's on purpose, right? Uh, because otherwise we have to grind through each of these tickets one at a time, right? So the other day we had three or four crimes kick off inside the 30 minute mark before a storm and like four or five tickets opened in the last 15 minutes before a storm. So in a case like that, I'm just going to, announce it to the whole damn server because you know it creates a lot of work creates a lot of frustration for the people having to deal with it um stuff like that so it's on knowledge purpose. is power and ignorance is just really not liked around here well it's just a question of trying to streamline some of the communications right because otherwise we have to go through it ticket by ticket by ticket and then oh i didn't know that was a rule oh i didn't know that selling drugs was part of that rule oh i had no idea you know on and on the way we go so much like when we ping you with a rule update and you don't know it because you didn't have your pings on <laughs> that too um next question is first of all really happy to have the chance to be in the second meeting i would like to ask about the possibility for recognized native tribes to have one bank access storage same as store owners do so everyone 
can have their own place to store items with the tribes of 15 members and more. One chest is hard to manage. Also, can my I... plans for... Also, my plans for recognized tribes to purchase farmland at their tribe location. Um, I'll speak on the farmland quick. That's something that's going to be coming for everyone. There's going to be the ability to purchase farmland for your home. Uh, like a plot will have an in-game item that you get that's a farming land deed that you'll have <clears throat> proof if you need to. Um, what else was I going to do with that? Uh, oh, yeah, stables. Uh, we're going to come up with a price, and you will be able to purchase a stable boy to have at your house. So that will be coming soon, too. Probably in next month with the quality of life updates. I'll uh, officially announce that. Um, I'll let Mercy talk about the storage i personally i mean i don't know what the difference between that and a fucking camp is but we could probably work something out but mercy if you have something to add sound like you do yeah so my kind of thing is with the way i set up the tribes is admittedly you probably won't have your own personal banks but gang storages exist we have gang storage for such a thing you know you can use that for your tribe and that is what i would say use um essentially you know recognized tribes get access to things no one else in the community does you have access to shamans you have access to weaponsmiths you have access to actually like petition and claim plots of land which you know a few of the recognized tribes have done and there will be benefits to having um recognized land as well as being a recognized tribe in future um that's probably something we'll work on again in the civilian thing kind of tweaks on what can and can't happen farmland again it will be purchasable like everyone else can purchase it i keep getting a lot of questions can native tribes have this x y and i will say recognized tribes get a lot more than any other group in the community and kind of respect that a little bit you know there's no reason why a tribe should get free farmland when, you know, people who are other groups who aren't natives, you know, they don't get that option. So it would be paid as how everyone else pays. Um, yeah, it's just essentially that. Um, for now, I would say gang storage is probably your best bet for camp storage. If you're not going to be using a camp box. That's all I had to say on that. Was just kind of, you know. Yep, I think it's fair. I think we've done a lot for the native tribes. We'll continue to do stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. we receive, I don't know, a half dozen requests a week. And uh, I mean, you can keep sending the requests in, but please don't be frustrated if we don't honor every request. Like, there's, it's a, it's a big, big world out there, and we try to accommodate as many things as possible. Anything else, Billy? And I've got a few things I can go over. No, that's it. Well, I got more questions here to read out, but um, yeah, I, just, tagged, I tagged you in that channel too, so you could find it. Yeah, I see it there. Thank you. Yep. So you know, a couple of big picture things. Um, you know, in terms of the overall, uh, you know, I think state of the economy and state of the server. You know, we continue to monitor the economy. The economy is doing great. Um, you know, we've got some plans, as Billy has already said, to introduce farms, which you'll be able to pay for. Uh, introduce stables that you'll be able to pay for the rare guns thing should finally get moving pretty soon uh, which you know this is so for people who have saved or are accumulating wealth for you to have some things to spend money on uh we'll probably be doing a little bit more with furnishing uh in the weeks ahead so you can get some custom furniture you know put on your property uh or custom fencing and crap like that uh, again it's a big server it takes time to do all these things so you know we won't be able to accommodate every request instantly uh, but uh like I say, we want to continue to have money sinks. I don't think we have any new money sinks that we're thinking about. Um, the economy has done very, very well with the ones we have. Um, you know, our goal here at the economy is always interdependence, right? So we're always going to err on the side of creating things for players to make, then to sell to other players, to craft into recipes. Uh, although we're going to do the civilian pass here in March, I would not expect a whole bunch of NPC jobs. Uh, we get asked about that a lot. Uh, it's been our experience that most NPC jobs, um, if they're not power gameable for massive cash, get used for like a day and then never used again. Um, so it's a question of balance, right? So I know people want to be able to sweep the street or 
you know, fix the train tracks or something. Um, but those are super hard to balance. Uh, either you balance them in a way that people will spend eight hours doing them and make far more money than our economy could absorb, or you balance them in a way where people will start posting feedback that it's not worth it, it's a waste of time, and they never go back to it again. So there's a lot of trickiness to doing that, but I know we've got plans to introduce some of those. As far as criminality, I think the criminality on the server has gotten much, much better in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I would ask our criminal groups uh, to go a little bit easy. Uh, it's gotten better this week on just the random robberies. Um, it's not against the rules to rob people. Uh, it is a little tiresome uh, when a gang logs on and spends four, five, six hours chain robbing people all over the state. Because um, most of the people you're chain robbing uh, are not the kind of people who could afford to get hit two or three times a day. So again, not against the rules, but just robbing random people should not be your gang's definition. It should be something you do occasionally, uh, something you do to, I don't know, between other major events. Uh, there's a lot that can happen criminal-wise on the server. Yeah, we've got a group doing moonshine in a super creative way. Uh, we've got a group running uh, drugs in a very, very subtle and creative way. Uh, you know, there, you could hit other gangs, you could create territories and enforce territories. Uh, you can kidnap for profit. You can, you know, do all sorts of interesting things, run scams, fix horse races, fix boxing matches, um, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, to the criminals, please think creatively beyond just, hey, here's two farmers. Let's all six of us roll up on these two farmers. Um, I think those are the two big picture things overall. Um, you know, I think we're doing pretty well with both the economy and both the criminal side of things. All right, more questions, Billy? Uh, the next one is for me, I guess, and it says Civ update. What are we expecting to see because with the current economy? That's all it says. Um, is the current economy bad? Jed? I don't know. I don't, I don't have an issue with the economy right now. I don't, I, I don't know if this guy is or he's just asking. But Yeah, I don't know. The economy's in great shape. I mean... Whatever we introduce in the Civ thing will hopefully encourage interdependence, trading among players and interactions and NPC or player companies getting set up. Uh, it's probably not going to be a whole bunch of things where you can just like, get a job from I, an NPC. Well, I don't know if that questions too as to like how much items cost, depending on what it is, but that's like a thing that's due to the fact that we set up so you can make like anywhere from $150 to $250 an hour on a job, right? Like things cost more money because you make more money. That's how it works. It's just we found balances that way and maybe someday when we do a 2.0 like there'll be a full rebalance and maybe things will be like more realistic to the era era but uh i don't know it's i don't think there's an issue right now if anything i think some stuff needs to be bumped up like i don't i'm not a fan that somebody comes to the server and like the second day here they have a fucking bolt action and like the best guns available like that should be a progression system to me like a bolt action might have to be bumped up because like i said it's the same thing with the horse trainers. Like, sure, a horse trainer can sell a horse dirt cheap so that somebody has a fucking horse to get from point A to point B instead of, you know, a nag. But at the same time, why does that person need, you know, anything better than a nag on their first day or second day, third day in the server? Like, that person needs to go learn how to role play and work in the server themselves and make the money and get the things. It's, I don't know. There's, I enjoy the progression of it. And, teach their own i guess some people it's business in in role play so well some of this is about building for longevity right and and that's what billy is saying right if everything comes quickly you quickly run out of things to do right so this is not some massive 10 year old mmo you know with 10,000 hours of planned content in it right you know you have to create the content and we have to create progression so uh some of it we purposely slow down some of it we purposely price in a way that creates interaction so yeah, just keep that in mind. Hundred percent. That's why, like, certain items, like, you have to go to a blacksmith, like the horse trainers. It's all set up to drive player economy, right, and require you to go talk to people to get things. So, uh, next is characters, character appearance, and barber update. The last community meeting, you mentioned a character creation overhaul and a new barber script that might be coming to us. Is there a date we can expect this to go live? Uh, this would probably be, some of it could come next month with the Civ update. I do have a new barber thing, but that will be for the new skin. Um, there's no rush on that. I, we have too much we need to polish up right now to jump into a huge 
you know, core fucking upgrade like we did with the horses and that type of thing and farming. Um, I don't think we're ready for a major change like that at the moment again. So that probably won't be for a few months, like I said before. Uh, next is Native RP. Can we get some love for us who role play as natives with stuff like native weaponsmiths customizing bows? This is out of our ability. Um, I, I add everything that I can for you guys. Um, not everything works in Red M yet. Uh, nothing from story mode does as far as weapons, and then a lot of weapons from RDO do not work as well, like variants of uh, revolvers and the bow, for example. Uh, knives, like we can't use the hammer, we can't use a bunch of melee weapons that would be awesome to have. A bunch of lanterns we can't use. There's all kinds of stuff. It's just not here yet. So when it is, trust me, I will have it in 100%. Um, but as far as weapons for the natives, I've added everything that I could right now, other than fire arrows. Well, I think one thing on the natives, and maybe this is just a me thing, but, you know, at least my goal with the native tribes is not for us to create them as completely self-contained where the natives never have to leave their land, right? So, you know, we get these requests sometimes, right? Like butcher shops on native land and banks on native land and everything. So, you know... It, you know, a lot of what we try to do is to create opportunities for people to interact and actually encounter each other, right? So, you know, if we create all of the resources you need up in tall trees on your protected land, um, you know, we're not going to see you. So what we're creating is essentially a little mini server for you to play on inside your own universe. You know, we want you to have to come to town to trade, or we want you to have to come to town to, you know, do business and interact and meet with other people. Um, you know, that's part of what we're trying to achieve. You know, people ask for you know, they want the whole world to be a farm, right? Why can't we plant anywhere in the whole world? It's like, well, because we would never see anybody, right? People would go to some faraway corner where they knew they'd never be seen and plant their 40 plants and call it a day. Um, we want people out and about interacting, building community. Um, you know, now, if you can make a lot of money and you want to pay for your private farm, uh, that's different, but it's not going to be an everybody thing. It's certainly not the way we're going to price them. So, you know, keep that in mind. We're, we're trying to create opportunities for people to overlap so stories overlap and RP happens. Not just little micro communities scattered all over the map. But it is good, and that's part of the reason too that uh going back to the culling issue. And for those who don't know what culling is, culling is when there's more than twenty eight people in an area at one time, people will start going invisible. And this is due to the native Red Dead game only allowing thirty two players in one lobby at a time. So right now, that is our major issue. And CFX has said that that is not on their radar at all to fix anytime soon. They said there's way more important one-sync bugs and issues that they need to work out before that even gets looked at. So it's going to be a while, and we're going to have to be patient. Um, I don't know, for those that haven't been here that long, some of us went through Red M when you could only have 32 people in a server. Uh, so just be lucky that we can have this many. It's, it's amazing as buggy as it is. Uh, next question was criminal role play and law role play. How can we as a community come up with a solution where everyone has fun? If I could, I would like to speak and give examples during the meeting. That is from Carl Johnson. So we can call him up after and he can share his thoughts. If he's here, just go ahead and if he's here, just raise his hand right now. So we don't forget. Sure, yeah. Carl, if you're here, raise your hand. So help me God if it's about a drug sale. All right, let's keep going. Uh, apparently hand raising is, uh, it's not like raise the hand. Yeah. So they can't raise the hands. Oh, that's fixed. Is that because I spammed my hand raising? And no, it's yeah. good. Stop. Yeah. All right, Carl, I invited you there. You should be able to accept it. Hello. Howdy. Ah, oh, hello, yes. I was wanted to talk a little about uh, criminal roleplay and the law roleplay and how to, like, and how we, like, how we could um, improve upon that. What do you got, Mark? Uh, I saw like a comment a few days ago about some grave robbers, like mm -hmm. uh, how they chose to uh, do um, uh, gunplay over uh, roleplay in that situation. Uh, and I think it was yeah, Bullet Garrett who wrote that comment in the fire pit, obviously. 
we talked about that they uh, that yeah, yes uh, the criminals decided to instead of role playing just started shooting but i find that in situations where criminals versus lawmen to actually have a fun role playing situations there needs to be some type of win win but for most most times for a criminal to win it's about uh, them needing to have a gun because uh, instead uh, if they don't if they don't decide to start shooting they will most likely just get into jail start getting like cogged and uh, start getting uh, fined or just have a lot of jail time and that will just make for a very boring situation for criminals i think in my opinion so like how like how how could be a good way to actually like um I'm a Swedish, so I have a little problem with language. Like, um, like, uh, like to increase the interaction before something yeah, happens. Like, yeah, inter- yeah no, interaction between uh, the... I'm going to search the English it's, word for this. Uh... Uh, like even out the wins between lawmen and criminals without ter- tearing up the role play so everyone can have fun. See, this is a hard one to go by because yeah. everyone's different, right? Every situation's different, and yeah, I've I've tried to plug in a rule before, bring it to attention that maybe we should make it so cops aren't allowed to shoot until a criminal does, and that's yeah. not really fair in the same sentence, yeah. right? Because yeah. at the same time, a criminal could be an asshole and just start blasting like you're talking about. So, yeah, it's it's a fine line, and that's where like the even playing field would come in my opinion is the chase in quotations right like the criminal doesn't need to always shoot they should try to escape yeah. and in that same sentence the cop should not try to shoot them should in, instead you know give them the chase and chase maybe try to hog tie them try to push them over whatever it may be right it's a lot of people do resort to guns first and yeah, of course it, it, it's hard it's it's people's go-to and everyone reacts different to every situation so it's yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what to say to that. If anybody yeah. else in the staff team wants to chime in, feel free. It's a uh, it's it's a tough one to monitor, though, for sure. Yeah, but all, all we can do is encourage people and try to push them in the right direction to you know, of course, role play properly. Or yeah, yeah. No, I know for a fact. Like when I've done some criminal thing and I've just seen the lawmen run up to me with their guns out, I could have just started shooting, you know. But that's just very boring role play, to be honest. But I know for a fact they are coming against me to hogtie me and start um, uh, taking me to the jail. And that's just also very boring roleplay, to be honest. So there needs to be like a fine line so that both criminal roleplayers and law roleplayers can have fun in a situation where people will probably have, you know, where something might, something large might happen, such as either a shootout or someone getting into jail. But that's, I find that it's just very hard, you know? I would say that is something that would need to be, like, between the law and the criminals themselves, like, policing yeah. their RP. Like, it's something that both sides need to keep an eye on. Like, at the end of the day, like, these things are supposed to be seen, so it's supposed to be fun for everybody involved, yep. you know? It's like, yep. it's... So everyone winning and losing, it would be something hard for staff to police, but it would be something that cops and criminals could police this mostly for themselves, for the most part, in my opinion. Like, yeah, talk it out, have the tent standoff, you know, like go for it, try and make a whole big thing out of it, you know, like it's something that definitely is nice to see when you know certain cops and criminals do actually put the time in to be to make like a whole big scene out of like. Yeah, of course. A Munchen still bust or like a swamp air bust, you know, things like that. It's um it's yeah. definitely something that both sides can yeah. like work on. Dimmons just put it the perfect way right there. Everyone here should uh give the role play they want to get. The end 100%. of the day, that's the perfect way to put it. Yep. Um, and that's this the only this way to police it, right? We can't <clears throat> we're talking hundreds and hundreds of people. Right, so. Well, this goes back to the whitelist thing, right? Like this is part of being a public server. We're gonna have people that you know, aren't up to what some people think is the par for role play. Yeah. You know. and which I think is part of the charm to be perfectly fair of Gold Rush, right? You know, because what I've seen on whitelist servers is, you know, you wind up with a narrow definition of, of role play and, you know, and, and it's, you know, the server itself isn't anywhere near as dynamic uh, as people want to think it is, right? The people who love that definition of role play love it. Uh, and then a huge chunk of other people find it to be stifling, right? So, 
you know, we're going to have people that, that, that want eloquent, long, drawn-out scenes. We're going to have people that are tough and edgy. We're going to have people that want to pull out their guns. It's the nature of the beast, right? And it's not just crime, crim versus cop. It's crim versus people as well, right? Like, I'm sure yeah. there's people who've been robbed at their farm that wish the criminals gave them a better uh, role-placing. Yeah, of course. Um, the criminals don't, right? They roll up, they hog tie, they grab and go, right? And they move on to the next guy. So it's across the board, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think we understand what we do in tickets is we try to encourage people. We try to, you know, articulate. I mean, you've all seen my posts about all the different ways you could be a criminal and things you should be doing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about each decision <laughs> we make when we're in a scene. Right? Yeah, and do your, do your role play. And, you know, it might not go the way you want it to go the first time, but that doesn't discourage you from continuing to do your role play. People will start picking it up, learning from that situation. And yeah. over time, things do get better. Yeah, I just don't want this to be looked at like it's only the criminals doing wrong. I find that it's uh, I find that a lot in situations it's usually the criminals getting shit on. So I find that um, that both law role play needs to improve on just as criminal role play needs to be improved on. So both can have a fun way to interact with everyone. Because if if Trust that doesn't me. work, nothing will. To be honest. Trust me, Carl. You're seeing it from your own perspective, right? Because yeah. the, the amount of criticism the law gets is staggering. So yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't play as any. I like I play civilian okay. as fuck. So I uh, like I, I don't really know. Trust me, nobody nobody thinks it's just the criminals. Yeah, because no. Okay. Sometimes I think people think it's just the law. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it goes like the law. Maybe think the criminals have. Like, the criminal look forward to right so all right we got first. we got a million other questions thanks yeah of right. course yeah. yeah no problem it's so fun talking cheers thank you um well chad's got a question fucker actually allow chad to speak in front of 128 people thanks scary thought are we still going through the questions or are we going to go through this yeah channel? uh chad's asking when the 5m server is dropping uh so might as well drop the ball on that there is a whitelisted 5m server for uh it will be strictly listed to keep the role play quality high um but yeah that'll be coming in the next little while so i want to speak to the 5m server right because we just finished telling everybody all the reasons we can't or don't want to launch a second gold rush server a 5m server does not actually provide some of those same problems right so we do not have issues of story continuance we don't have issues of something happening in cowboy server a bleeds into cowboy server b you know people playing the same character in both Cowboy Server A and Cowboy Server B, a million different issues in terms of continuity and consistency and stories between two servers and then huge issues staffing it, right? So on the 5M server, uh, we don't have any of the story issues. Uh, we have new staff coming on board, people from the 5M community, some of whom are here and not in staff roles, but are very, very active, uh, sophisticated 5M people um, and a, a separate group of developers on the 5M uh, along with Billy and Chad. So, you know, our first and major goal is to protect Gold Rush at all costs, uh, but the 5M server allows us to extend the brand a bit and give people another opportunity to play something different when they get tired or bored or are just looking for something um, outside of Cowboys for a few hours, days, or weeks. You have my assurance that it will not take away from Gold Rush. No, not at all. It's, uh, that's why it's going to be whitelisted too, so that I can have minimal staff over there and I don't have to worry about fucking public shitlords. And before people start down this path, it's not being funded with Gold Rush money. So it's not, we're not taking cash out of the Cowboy server. And no, I'm not doing funding, funding the 5M server, right? So we have private funding for all the things that we do. So it's not being funded out of the Gold Rush money. Uh, next question is for founder admin. Is it possible to remove the handcuffs from the black market and rather just hogtie people and do requests to search or hold someone at gunpoint and do requests to search? It would make the experience more realistic and less scuffed because when you uncuff, there's often issues. Uh, 
highly doubt will remove handcuffs. Um, like once again, that's a, uh, we could implement a system like that that would force something like that, but that's also like a role play thing that anybody could do, right? You could do a slash do and patch down pockets to see what's there or whatever. I mean, I guess we could look into adding that to be part of the handcuff thing too, but it, the one thing I, have... I don't know what removing them from the black market would yeah, do. Yeah, we get a lot of questions around lassoing and handcuffs, and, and I certainly think that the lassoing would be nice if we could slow that down a little bit, but one thing we absolutely will not turn this into is like sort of the 5M side of cops and robbers where, you know, the criminal is running around in circles and the cop's trying to trip him so he can catch him and then the guy gets up and runs around again. Um, none of that is what we want to see here. So, you know, it's it's a balance, you know, between the lassoing working super quick uh, and handcuffs working as they do versus people running around in fucking circles and bunny hopping all over the place trying to avoid the actual arrest, right, which we don't want to see here either. I mean, I know that's fun for giggles watching Chang stream or something, but it's not what we want here. And we get a lot of requests for it. I mean, could we take out the handcuffs from the shop and make them somewhere else to get to where not everyone has a pair of handcuffs in their pocket? Yeah, we could make them harder to get for sure. Easy enough to do. Criminal side of it, obviously, not the law side, but... Yep. I don't know, that's a good thought. Look at that. Ah, craftable handcuffs. Excellent idea, Nutty. <sighs> you know, you know. All right, Bill, you want to keep pulling or I could pull some questions? Uh, we're almost done. I think I got one more here. Hold on. Uh, In-game stress. I'm interested in the stress mechanic. Obviously story over gunplay, but some jobs are a little more on the dangerous side than others. Any idea how fast or slow you plan on making the stress build up? Example, am I going to be... Beyond stressed after a brief shootout and have some sort of penalty? Well, I'd say after like a brief shootout, like you, you know, you might have to go sit beside a campfire for like the night or something, right? And rest with your buddies if it was a shootout. Maybe if you got wounded, fucking hang out at the campfire and relax a bit. Yeah, it'd be, I'd imagine you get pretty stressed out after a shootout. It'd be pretty stressful, wouldn't it? Well, like, I think he's also saying like, if a gunfight goes for like 15 minutes, by the time it's over, are you just stressed and can't even move? In the middle of that fight as well. Uh, I mean, no, I don't think it's going to go that crazy. It's not that crazy. It's going to be slow. Otherwise, it would screw hunters. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, 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 would, it would ruin everything. With everything. that in mind. So I wouldn't worry. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a slow, <laughs> yeah, it'll be a slow build up thing. <laughs> Is there any chance we can get a loading screen tutorial for when people join to the server? Um, unfortunately, that's something we can't do yet uh, that I'm aware of. I can look into it more, but uh, I don't think that's able to happen yet. It's still that fucking native loading screen from Red Dead. Uh, yeah, I mean, the loading screen would help for sure. We could look into that, but the guide will be pretty easy too, right? It'll just be slash guide, and it has like nine categories, I think, or 12? 12. 12. And, uh, yeah, that's basically yeah, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's. I just got to put some pictures on it. It's. I'll, I could probably push it tonight, to be honest. Uh, that's it for community questions in the forums. So we can open it up to the floor unless you got something else. Yeah, let me just go through some of these community ones. There are a whole bunch of questions about you know cleaning up the UI or a better UI for storefronts, a better UI for inventory. Um, I mean. I guess in certain areas perhaps, but like you guys, you know, we don't have an entire MMO dev team here, right? Like, you know, re rebuilding entire UIs for entire systems. Well, that'll while... be something that comes with 2.0 too, right? right. Like exactly. Yeah. Nice six, to seven have... months from now. Right. Nice to have Billy and Chad and everybody else is always out looking for new shit, always out looking for refinements. But, you know, I don't think we have any immediate intent to like start pulling down UIs and rebuilding them just to make them slicker and nicer, like nice to have, but uh, there's so much other shit we have to do, um, you know, with the limited resources. And the resources that are limited are, are time and ability, right? Uh, it's not a financial limit. It's time and ability. <laughs> Someone also mentioned, asked a question about prison guards and wanting to RP prison guards. And there seems to be some interest in that. Uh, I think we could stand that up as a potential role, right? I mean, there's no rule against having prison guards or prison RP. 
Uh, we just haven't really had people interested in doing that. <coughs> um, you know, some of the cops will do it periodically. Um, but uh, if that's something the server wants, and I guess we could set up like a feedback channel and gauge interest and perhaps create a role. But uh, I think I could speak for the admin team. If done right or even half right, it'd be fun. Right, it would make being mm -hmm. in prison suck a little less, and we would gladly support a job, perhaps <laughs> a small government salary and uniforms and all that kind of shit in an official yeah. role for people we who just... want RP prison. Yeah, I was gonna show that there's real interest. Like, you know, we had the livestock commission that kind of went nowhere. Yeah, and it would have to be implemented in a way where it's still fun, but it's not just a bunch of people dunking on prisoners because they can. Hundred percent. Um, which is what I've seen in other instances of guard roleplay in the past. On the topic of UI too, I forgot we actually have a new rendition of the inventory coming again too. That when you open your inventory, there will be uh, categories at the top for your clothing. You'll be able to click the icons and you know take your shirt off or your bandana, whatever it may be. Uh, that'll be coming soon too. I forgot. There's a question about putting a stable in San Luis. I think we can and should do that. I actually put one there. I don't know why the fucking guy didn't show up. Uh, we'll look into that yep. tonight. Um, can we get more ranches? Uh, I have a strict rule. I can add more ranches now for sure. But like, I have a rule that it needs to be a property. Like, I'm not gonna give you a ranch at like a fucking shack. You know what I mean? It's gotta be. You gotta have a suitable property for a ranch to get a ranch. So. So not one of my treehouse cabin? Got it. Give me a ranch at my the, cave. And well, it can't be my... on the doorstep of another ranch as well. Like... Oh, and also think about the ranches that we do have, right? Like, we want them to be, like, little mini centers of RP, right? Where people gather and they have employees. So, you know, if your proposal for a ranch is, like, you and your buddy, you know, on this property, it's probably not going to be something we're excited about. But, you know, like, McFarland's ranch is great. Um, the ranch that George Fraser and those guys have going right now has become a good center for RP. Uh, Mercy's Ranch has been a center for RP. Um, that's what we're looking for in the ranch, right? Cool business, provides necessary items to the economy, but also becomes you know, little gathering places, right? The uh, the Grizzly Ranch up there uh, that the Reckless guys are having, well beyond Reckless, there's 15 people up there now. Um, that's the kind of shit we want to see out of uh, the big properties, right? Not just you owning some big-ass property with one or two of you having fun on it. Um, Timmy, with your question about recycling RDR2 uh, building assets, uh, one server that I know of has figured that out, and they will not share the information. I personally have not found it in uh, OpenIV yet, but trust me, we will be implementing that when we learn how to do it. It's not a matter of we can't, it's a matter of we don't know how yet. And uh, yeah, RedM is very uh, tight. Nobody shares information as far as uh, script-wise with each other, really, so... Uh, with the livestock shit, what is the current state of livestock? I have no idea what you mean by that. Is this a ranching question too, or uh, let's just bring people in here to ch chat and put your yeah. hand up if you had a conversation or a question. A couple more real quick, Billy, for you. Uh, Mexico, excuse me, the status. Uh, of the bridge is pretty much ready to put in for Mexico, but there is, uh, no buildings over there or anything yet. We'll get some shit going low. Right, so the key to Mexico, guys, is having something meaningful to do there, right? So uh, the bridge Billy's been working on has just been a bit buggy. It would collapse, and sometimes you'd hit, like, an invisible wall and shit. So um, getting to Mexico should be happening, but having things to do in Mexico is the next challenge, right? So we just don't want people randomly wandering around the vast Mexican territory. Separate storage, Billy? Where are we with that? You know, uh well we were waiting for the new inventory to be finalized so once i get this last push of the inventory in we will uh be moving to the new storage system where banks will not have deposit boxes cool all right you can start bringing people in i'll keep scouring the chat for questions you can't yeah that's a single player mod uh cole there's lots of mods for mexico that work for single player red dead uh, they don't work for 5M necessarily. All right. Uh, if you got a question, put your hand up. We'll start bringing some people up. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Mr. Dicky Wiggles. Creative. You have to accept that there, Dicky. I know a great lawyer that can do a name change. Yeah, I know a few too. It's not his name, is it? Did you guys hear me? Mm hmm. Is that your name in game, by the way? It is. Yeah, you should change that. We're all adults here. 
Are you okay. Here? Anyways, um, so I had a couple questions about criminal role play um, when it comes to robbing and then uh, law enforcement interactions. Is this something we just talked about? Wait, go ahead. What's your questions? Um, so it's more of a matter of what exactly is the threat level when you have a gun out versus somebody who also has a gun out. So that's a good question. So this is two people pointing guns at each other? No, no pointing yet. So it's... But like, say I wanted to rob him, but he does have his gun out. I usually don't try it because they have their gun out. So in my mind, they're ready for it. But say if two people do have their guns out and one points a gun at the other, would we be allowed to point it back and role play off that? Or do we instantly have to say, hey, okay, my hands are going to go up? Yes, yeah, so... so I got it. Go ahead, Joseph. No, you're good. No, right? So the whole fear for life thing, which is what you're getting to, is it's not about, like, I have a gun out, you have a gun out, or we have two guys with guns out, therefore you automatically lose, right? Some people seem to think that, right? Is that, you know, if I have if I have three and you have two, that means we win. Or if two of us have guns out and one of you has guns out, we win. It's It's not about that, right? So fear for life is if you would reasonably and realistically fear for your life, right? So what do we mean by that? You know, you're sitting there walking along the side of the road three guys gallop up on you and pull shotguns and have shotguns pointed at your head. Like, you're fucked, right? You have to fear for your life. There's no right. way you could reasonably get out of that situation. But if it's two guys in a field and you're both carrying your pistols at your hip, you know, that's a that's a come-as-you-can come as type deal. If, if it's two guys walk up against one guy and the one guy has his gun at his hip but the two guys haven't drawn on him yet, I mean, that one guy has a reasonable chance to react to the two guys that haven't you know, pull the, you know, pointed the, the rifles at him yet or the pistols at him yet. So um, we want to leave as much of this up to the players as we can without turning into like hero RP, right? We've actually had people come in and say, my RP is that I'm not afraid of anybody. Um, you know, that's why they shot at the four guys that had shotguns at them, right? That's bullshit, right? That, that's not fear for life. But, you know, if you have a reasonable chance to escape or a reasonable chance to defend yourself or a reasonable chance to protect your shit, um, then you're allowed to do that. Conversely, as a robber, you roll up on two guys farming and you're one guy with a shotgun, you know, you have a reasonable chance to be able to rob them. They have a reasonable chance to be able to defend themselves. They don't have to automatically surrender because you have the shotgun, nor do you have to automatically not roll up to them because it's two and you're one. Does that make sense? Okay, so that makes good sense. Uh, that was the main thing I was worried about is I didn't want to get... Uh you know, banned or anything like that for trying to, you know, protect my, you know, whatever I had in the game on me, you know. Uh, And my other thing about that was, would, if I can think about how to word it. So, when you're robbing somebody, is the only way to find out what they have on their inventory is to do, like, slash me checking your pockets or something and asking them? No, you can handcuff them and search their pockets yourself. Like it would open it up like an inventory. Okay, that's like what I was book. wondering. Um, because like I'd lasso, and I couldn't like figure out how to do that. So when you handcuffs, is there like a button or? Yeah, when you handcuff someone, it, well, yeah, when you use handcuffs, it brings up a menu, right? That you can handcuff someone, search them, or bag them. So. Okay, and. Uh, that's it, really. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Covered a lot for me. So, all right, all right, thanks, man. We'll say too, like if you have a bunch of stuff on you, you know, and you're trying to protect it, and two people try to roll up on you, don't be afraid to lose what you got. It's also RP. Have a story. Yeah, build off of that. Don't think, okay, since I have a thousand dollars in my pocket, I don't want to lose that, so I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna die, but they can't take my stuff. You know. Don't use it as an, an escape goat. RP it out. If you lose it, you lose it. Still a video game. Take that exactly. story and roll with it. You know what I mean? And I wanted to take a moment because of that <clears throat> conversation because everyone's going to ask a million questions on, well, this is this right or is this wrong? And Jed hit the nail right where it should be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the rule side of it. Staff, If it's gray, staff will side with the role play. All right, that's that's part of the rules. So everyone understands that. So if it's a gray area, it's not 
you know, black and white as to what the rules say. We're going to go with what the role, how the role play went. So just a fair warning to everybody. So don't try to come to us with a million tickets asking, will this happen this way? And my, you know, like Jed said, my character is pretty powerful, so he should have won or whatever, because at the end of the day, the role play is going to win. Amen. Valuing your life is one of the rules where we're not, we don't have like a hard, fast stance on it. The, the scenario it, it is involved in is kind of how we make our judgment on that. Something I tell my lawman all the time too, <clears throat> just a little thing. Uh, if you're not having fun, then what's the point of playing? Just wanted to make that announcement. Yeah, roll with it. Anybody See what happens. Else? Goes from there. We got other questions to bring people up. Dick, you want to quietly <clears throat> step out of here? So I don't have to disconnect you. Otherwise, it'll fully remove you from the channel. Should be a button at the bottom to quietly exit. Never mind, I got gotcha. you. Next up is Arena. Hey, sorry, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, sorry, I can't hear anyone. Let me try switching it. I'm sorry, I can't hear anyone. Let me... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, now I think I can hear. All right. Uh, I had a quick question on the role player of a gun play role, um, which was, when should we make a ticket for that kind of thing? Because I think it's, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to define it. It's. So, um, go ahead, Mercy. No, you go. Ahead. I was going to say, you know, gunplay, roleplay, roleplay role for gunplay, and, you know, roleplay, like, it's not a rule, it's not a hard and fast rule, it's a philosophy we try and instill in everyone, mm -hmm. you know, so there are people who will gunplay over roleplay, and it's shitty, but, like I said, it's not a rule, it's a philosophy, and it's one we stand by, so, you know, Essentially, there's not like a hard and fast line of reporting because essentially, like I said, it's just a server philosophy. We're trying to get into people, you know, go for the role play, don't go for the win because it's shooting someone ends the role play in the end, like yeah. immediately, right? It's... So, I would say, in terms of when do you make a ticket, when the person's lack of fear, you know, for life mm. actually has meaningful results in game. Right. So oh, if it's, okay. you know, so because they didn't fear for their life and it was obvious, right. So three of you roll up on a, you know, a person who's at a farm, you all draw guns on them. Like it's clearly this person is like caught dead to rights. I don't know. That person breaks their gun out, shoots somebody, the person they shot then gets picked up by the cops for robbing, blah, blah, blah. So there's actual real consequences there. I would say make a ticket, right. Because they didn't fear for their life. They triggered a whole bunch of shit that led to like loss or in character ramifications for you. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Billy and I were involved in a scene. I think Billy was there when four of us rolled up on a guy. Uh, this is in a different server. I don't know if Billy was there. We pulled a gun on him. We had guns on him, and the guy's like, doesn't fear for his life. He's like, I'm the fastest draw on Valentine, right? And he and he goes to shoot us, and we just shot him in the head. Like he didn't fear for his life. But at the end of the day, we didn't care because it didn't mean anything, right? We blew him off his horse and threw his body in the creek, and that was the end of it. Um, you know, there was no real reason to create a bunch of tickets. The guy was just a fucking idiot. Uh, but mm -hmm. if the fear for life scenario results in like a major loss for your character or an arrest or something, um, then make a ticket. If it's something that's repeated or if it's flagrant, make a ticket. If it's just some random encounter somewhere that has no real impact, eh. Okay, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Alrighty. Thanks. Deacon West. Um, my question isn't as on topic about that, but with the uh, like bank storage or like any storage in general, being able mm -hmm. to move out like specific amounts of said item. Would that ever be a thing, or is it currently a thing? That's uh, that's coming with the new inventory update too. There's going to be like when you right-click the item, there'll be a split option that will bring up like a an input, so you can enter how many you want to split, right? Or give for that matter. The give will have it too. Okay. So, yeah, if that's what you mean, that's what you mean, right? Like 
yeah. to be able to actually like click something and be like, I want to move 20 out instead of, you know, double clicking and trying to find a fucked up number. <laughs> yeah. Cause I spend like yeah. five minutes each time just trying to uh, get yeah. the right amount rather than. Yeah. It's annoying. It's uh, we're coming with a fix for that for sure. All right. That's it. Thanks. All right. Yeah. No problem. Uh, a couple of questions here that I just want to jump in on because they're important. House auctions, last house auction was a month. Um, you know, will these be more frequent? You know, are they something people could expect to happen? Um, so, Keats, I'll let you speak about that because you can handle Keats real is not here. He's not here. Um, I think we need to do better at that house auction thing. So, I, the answer for Keats, you know, I, I think every two weeks um, we should have some sort of house auction. Right. It should, and it should be something you could set a watch by so people could have some expectation as to when it might happen and they could save money for it or whatever the hell's going to go on. So, the, and the answer to some other questions. Most houses have been bought, so we think we'll probably continue with the auction system uh, for the foreseeable future. That also said, you know, we have high taxes. If you don't pay your taxes, the house does go back to the government. Uh, we also try to keep an eye on people who are completely inactive and will reach out to people and confiscate businesses and houses if they're not used. So that is how the house inventory gets recycled. But every two weeks, I think, you guys think that's reasonable, rest of the staff here, just so people can actually have an expectation on the, on the real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Grave robbing takes three seconds, but 15 seconds to get an informant. What? It's people are interrupting the animation on grave robbing. That's the fun. That's okay. The, right on. I'll yeah. put a citizen lock to lock people there. Yep. That's always gone. They go in. All it takes is one person to ruin it. Yep. I've literally had uh, been sat in no clip had when I was doing some unjailing for someone, uh, so I was getting law notifications. Had a notification which was two seconds from me. The ro the the grave robber actually got away before I could even no clip there. It was insane. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'll put a citizen lock there and lock yeah. him there. Thank you. Yeah. But the questions around the stock market. So let me address the stock market. So. That's on us, right? It's sort of a cumbersome process, and we just, we as staff, just haven't developed a good enough routine on that. So, um, a couple of people have asked, is it, you know, can it be manipulated and what have you? Uh, it, it can't be manipulated by outside forces, per se. Um, but uh, we will do a better job on, you know, tying the, the stock prices, um, you know, to actual, you know, market fluctuations on a more regular basis and be more consistent with the buy sell thing. It's just a question of getting the system. Um, <coughs> the cell will be open today, by the way, at restart Sunday. Yep. The problem is it's, it's just not an automatic thing. Billy has to go in and set it and all that sort of stuff in terms of converting it from buy to sell and, and all of that. So um, it's just a question of us just making better time for it. That's really all it comes down to. Nothing more. I can probably that. fucking, me and Jack could probably put a fucking auto system on it too. So. Yep. Lots of questions around it. It's not because it's broken. It's not because we don't want to. It's just one of those weird things that slips through the cracks on a regular basis. So we apologize for that. Uh, I had a mute. Go ahead. I said I had a mute real quick, and I don't want to talk about it if it's already been talked about, but shops with saloon owners, was that mentioned yet? No. Okay. I just, want to, I just want to say, like, if you own a saloon and you have a shop, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't open up your saloon and just make your money through the shop. Try to, like, I've heard people say, I want to order something. And then they say, just go to the box over there, pick up something. That should not be the case. You know, like open up your place, host events. Like the, the, the Yeah, you should be serving food. You shouldn't be, you know, making food and then just leaving it in your fucking box for people to buy. And that's a valid point. Just uh, wanted to state uh, it's that. It's not towards everyone, by the way, but it's like to the people, no. like he's saying, people that don't actually open their fucking saloons or promote any sort of activity or business to bring people there and then complain to us that their business failed. And it's like, well, you literally did nothing to try to bring people there. So Event. all they did was ask for a shop and they thought they could get rich off a shop being out front of their saloon is what most people think. I'll also say just opening up isn't enough sometimes. Post you got to make activities. Yeah, you got to mm -hmm. do something to pull people there. Like that's that's the whole point. And I would say to the players, um, tip your bartenders, tip the people you that are providing services to you, whether it's your train drivers and all that, right? So as a community, we're first to complain when oh the saloons never open. There's no businesses around here. But then when we go and use them, um, we don't actually make it economically viable for them sometimes. So you know, part of having the things we want to have is to 
uh, reward the people who are playing or you know providing them. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not. It's not a law or rule that you have to tip, um, but uh, it it helps make it more interesting for them. Or if they're hiring bartenders, uh, stuff like that. They're they're not making a lot of money. Especially uh, people who are just bartenders and aren't actually the saloon owner. Like they don't make that much money. So it's yeah, it's, we, we get the things we want, right? Like, you know, my character buys outfits from tailors, right? Like I'm perfectly capable of making my own outfit. Um, but I love the fact that we've got people committed to RPing tailors, right? My character always tips the train conductor because I think it's amazing that uh, on that rare occasion where I want to ride the train, there's a train running by me in town. Like, that's just cool shit. I like walking into a saloon and seeing a bartender. Um, so I'll tip the bartender far more than the drink. I don't expect these things to be given to me, um, you know, um, and I don't expect them to be there, right? I understand that these are players making decisions to do this and, and they have to make money and have fun, good interaction too. So I don't know. That's just more of a nudge or a dad lecture on that, but you know, I think we could do better. I hear bartenders say that they make like twenty dollars in tips in a night I, I tip twenty dollars on a drink i don't understand how that happens but uh staff apps those open every month or two mctavish those will come and go uh i'm not sure when we'll be next probably within a month we'll maybe bring in some more we'll see so did i just see another one? Oh, the we talked about the ice boxes and food uh rotting that'll be coming eventually it's uh it's on the list Uh, Mikhail, about your RP on the tobacconist. I don't know about Atticus. I haven't seen his product. Um, but we love the fact that you're running the business and the Farmers Coalition. And uh, Mikhail's you know, is awesome. I went into St. Denis the other day, and uh, we, me and Nutty were walking up to the market, and all we heard was somebody going, cigarettes for sale, get your cigarettes. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? We walk in the market, and he's sitting there at his shop fucking advertising, playing the guitar. It was great, man. I'm like, it was awesome. awesome. Like, fucking yeah. amazing. So. It's good on you, man, for sitting there doing that. You, that was, you know, it's, it reminded me of like the fucking paper guy. You know, that was read amazing. all about it. It's just yeah, awesome. really, that was awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of stuff. Um, and it's not. It's not just a quick, but that's the kind of stuff that makes us. And when I say us, it's more Billy and Chad and all them want to continue to do more in Mercy. You know, that that actually have to do the recipes and actually have to do the builds. And, and create it all right we get lots and lots and lots of requests for things and then once we implement them we never see them used right so it's really gratifying and motivating when we see them used like james here uh asking about the in-game like railroad schedule and notice board we have like a scene system where you can put a poster up like i'll, I'll put that in the guide too so that people can do it but there's a link you can put that you can like paste a discord image or anything into like a poster that you created and actually put it on a poster in game so like the train conductors could easily go to any notice board in a train station and put a, a poster up, like, in-game that actually says the train schedule. I don't know if they do it or not, but it's it's very, it, like, it can happen. It's in the game, so that's there already. Um, I have an actual poster board, too, that I wanted to put in, but there's no <laughs> ability for me to lock it right now, so I don't need people posting fucking Pornhub and all this other bullshit in the server, which they'd be able to do. <laughs> And I don't want it locked to an admiral either, because then I got to have an admin be a fucking paper boy and run to the poster board and post people's shit every day. So <laughs> it's uh, it's about finding a balance. I have to try to lock that. To so I, I have a question about business seizures uh, that seems to have picked up a few likes here. So uh, this is from Dr. Matthews. From the things I have heard in character, some players are arrested but face no penalty toward businesses or real estate they own. Uh, Felix did when people are committing illegal acts on his property, right? So here's the thing on business ownership and criminal stuff um, is at least the rule that we've been working off of is that if we can prove, if, as in like the law can prove that your business is the center of your crime and you're doing crimes in your business, then your business is subject to seizure. That's right? exactly like you said it in that thing about Felix, right? Like that major crime happened in his building and that's why... At that right. time, it was seized. Yeah. We have no intention of taking businesses away from people who are criminals. It has uh, to be, like you said, directly tied to like money laundering or, you know, people are getting tortured or killed in that fucking building, like whatever it is. Or, uh, you know, repeat selling of illegal goods inside of the building. You know, don't think we don't see you. If we're not. So I, that, that question gets asked a lot. Cops mutter about it a lot. Um, 
you know, we have an awful lot of people who own businesses but also dabble in criminal stuff. We have no intention of seizing their business because they get caught selling moonshine and they happen to own, uh, I don't know, fuck, a, a gun store. It, it, it's not how we want to do it. But if they're selling moonshine in the gun store and they got people coming up picking up coke in their gun store, um, then and the cops can prove it, then a case to, will be made to take the business. So hopefully that clears it up. Uh, Ray, I think a roadmap would be sick. We could probably put together a uh, nice little roadmap. Still have a hand up, by the way. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that right now, too. We got kind of lost there in uh, the sauce. Um, to the uh, to the people asking about getting your own private personal recipe, that's not something that happens unless you own a business where it potentially constitutes it. Mikhail and Atticus have both gotten custom cigarette recipes because they own cigarette companies. Pe saloons get custom drinks and whatnot, custom food, because they own those properties. You cannot just be any random Joe Schmo and get a recipe. And I will say, if it's not like a saloon, <coughs> we don't just bring us an idea and say, like, I need four recipes for this. Like, take it as far as you can without needing a recipe. Like, so when we see people actually, you know, doing everything to make a business work with what they have, like, then we're very inclined to help them further if they're putting in the work. Yeah, if the RP continues and builds, <laughs> then you have more RP will be made. Yeah, and guys, a lot of that is not like, you know, any sort of elitist thing from staff. It's just a question of effort, right? Like work, like everything people ask about business approvals. You know, it takes us sometimes two weeks to get through businesses. And one of the reasons is when we approve a batch of businesses, the result is a whole shitload of work, right? So I think two weeks ago, we approved eight or 10 businesses. You know, recipes had to get created, storefronts had to get put in, keys had to get made. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff has to happen for these businesses that we approve, which all take Billy's time and Chad's time and Mercy's time and staff time. So, you know, that's part of the process, right? It, it's not just a question of approving a business and it's over. It's the work that comes after we approve a business. Um, so, you know, please be patient on that. If you have an RP business, don't submit it. We don't need your, you don't need our approval, right? So 50% of every proposal we get, um, are businesses that do not need our approval. Like you need our approval if you require resources from staff, right? A location of our a property, city, yeah, or recipes, or... all that. Like, right. like he's saying suppliers, security companies, anything like that, just do it in character. And if you have a thing that could be done in character, but doesn't require a spot although you think it would be nice if it had a spot do it first right we get a lot of requests like i want to be a farm mm -hmm. supplier so i need to have this building like for fucking what <laughs> like you know you could supply stuff off a cart um do that to start and then down the road perhaps other things can come from it right so we get that a lot like i want to be a security company great well yeah but i need a storefront or i need an out you know place in san Denis to do it like no you don't like start doing it mm -hmm. Um, because inevitably what happens is if we do it and Nutty goes and does a custom build, you know, you do it for 24 hours, then we never see you again, right? And there goes 15 hours of staff time, so. I'm also saying getting a recipe does not guarantee you making money at all. It's um, RP. It's RP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say the businesses that focus more on providing a role play service make you more money. All right. Uh, Miss Starks, what's your question? Can you guys hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. So, a little bit of a derail of the current topic, but it's just something a bit I've mentioned before, but obviously wasn't able to bring up in questions or whatever because I didn't think it was worth mentioning. Um, it's uh, referring to character customization. So, you know, when you like, for me personally, like when I first joined, this is my first role play server, like for voice and whatnot. When I first came here, and busy making my my first character, um, is there a way to possibly change up the character customization? Because I find a little bit of a problem making my character. Um, <laughs> so for example, like if you have come in at like the wrong time and it's night and you gotta make your character in the dark and it's just like you can't see anything so and then you gotta like kind of wait for it to turn day um 
and the sliders oh my god the sliders <laughs> I'm sorry it might be like a personal problem but I really think the sliders are a little bit tedious personally so if... clicking or... like... say again no no not the clicking like just scrolling through everything like the like for example the the original character customization in audio is perfect i think that's a great yeah, yeah. way to <laughs> i wish we could have that it's uh someday <laughs> and Hopefully. for like when you first make a character if it's dark you can just hit enter go somewhere where there's light and do slash create oh yeah no definitely um it's just that like obviously when i i didn't know that when i first came yeah, into true. the server to be honest but yeah now with that knowledge and yeah like the presets or whatever because there's i see a lot of people just going around looking like a basic presets yeah. it's just really sad to see <laughs> we call those default okay. Danny. default danny at your server yeah i would say it is something we would love to have it's just one of those things of if we were going to have that, like we need to get that custom made by a dev for our framework, mm. I believe. Don't we believe? Yeah. And it's just, it's a so case the, of... The natives for all that stuff are like just yeah. finally being discovered for like a lot of the RDO stuff. So I don't mm -hmm. know if anyone who actually has the RDO character creator. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I know some people are, are ahead of us. Like a lot of, some servers have like face double and more makeup and all that stuff, face paint, which we don't have the overlays yet, but... I think that'll be something that mm. comes once again with the skin wipe when we upgrade the framework. So, yeah, uh, I thought I didn't know if it was like worth mentioning because, uh, like, I, I, I like the group of friends that I hang around find the the customization a little bit tedious. Oh, for sure, it's definitely not perfect. Oh, uh, I, I agree. I have a very long, hateful history with character creators, so don't worry. Yeah, no. <laughs> just thought it might be worth mentioning. But thank you. No, thank you for the question. No problem. All right, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Seems... Unless anybody else has questions, but I think there's uh, an event and server for people to get to. I think Garnish is throwing a fucking beach bash. So, oh yes, oh, we, yeah. uh, we'll let everybody get to it. Uh, thanks for coming out and listening, and all your questions and happy uh, role playing. I hear a quick question from John Lane here. When people like he asked it twice, get sent to prison, they get sent with their items. Is there a way that we could have items confiscated and give them back? Uh, John, I mean, I think in a perfect world, yes, but it creates all sorts of issues, right? Like, with who has it? Who confiscated it? Where is it? My head got popped. Oh, I've got to go to bed right now. I'll get it tomorrow. Um, the logistics of that are uh, are pretty are pretty terrible uh, with confiscating stuff. That's really what it comes down to, man. I, I would love to do it, but you know, maybe if we get good prison RP, it could be confiscated when they arrive at the prison and handed to them when they leave. Uh, but to have to return, say, to Valentine to pick up your shit that got confiscated in prison just creates a whole other series of interactions that are, will lead to a million tickets. I never got my gun back. I never saw the cop again. I would say if it was an automated thing, it'd probably wipe all your customizations as well. Yeah. <laughs> Which, more issues. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for the patience. And thanks for doing all that you do for Gold Rush. It's been a good run so far. Hope you guys uh, continue to build and tell great stories, and we're here to help make that happen. So appreciate y'all and appreciate the admin team. As always, you guys are amazing. Talk oh, okay. shucks. Except for Ging. I only understand one out of every three words he says. Fuck! Are you in a right now? Uh, no, no. I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm going yes. to fucking Jed's house on my fucking mod on count. Well, if you're coming here to rob me, just speak slowly so I understand what you're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, right? Mercy is my official translator. He says he wants an iron brew and a deep fruit fried Mars bar stout. I would fucking love I didn't one. understand Mercy I there. fucking love one. Oh, wow. You know I mean, <laughs> I've actually got iron brew, huh? Hey? I don't know what any of that even means. Like, if you came to my house asking for that, I would have it's a, it's a It's a soda. It's a it's soda that tastes like a rusty nail. Fuck it, it's like not a fuck.